Thank you for downloading this episode of a History of Central Florida podcast. This is the podcast where we explore Central Florida's history through the artifacts found in local area museums and historical societies. This series is brought to you by Riches, the regional initiative to collect the histories, experiences, and stories of Central Florida and the Orange County Regional History Center. I am Katie Kelly, and I will be your host for today's episode titled Ceramic Pots. For this episode, we traveled to the New Smyrna Museum of History, where on display are pre-Columbian Florida Indian pottery and pottery shards. Most people do not realize that one of the most important technological innovations to human civilization was the development of pottery, specifically the invention and utilization of clay pottery. The advent of clay was first developed over 20,000 years ago, during a period of time known as the Upper Paleolithic Era. The first clay objects were believed to be molded to represent human and animal effigies, but eventually clay and its abundance as well as its malleability, proved to be the ideal material to store and cook food and other items. Once fire was introduced to the production of these containers, it added the characteristics of durability and ornamentation, as well as variation to the cooking process. Although these items serve a routine function, over time, the process and intricate designs on such vessels work as a fingerprint to locate and understand a group of people in a certain place and a certain time. Scholars believe that intricate and complex manufacturing of ceramic clay pots common to North America started in Central America with ancient Mesoamerican societies and soon was either diffused or adopted by other native societies throughout the Southeast and Florida. There are many similarities between the manufacturing and design of clay pots throughout Florida. The ceramic pots at New Smyrna Museum represent the Indian societies that lived along the St. John's River that have come to be known as the St. John's Culture. We spoke with Dr. Neil J. Wallace, assistant curator at the Florida Museum of Natural History, about what made their pottery unique. In in the St. John's River Valley, the most common series of pottery is St. John's. And and St. John's pottery is distinct because it has... Uh, sponge spicules in the paste Um, and it has this what people call ashy feel to it um, that some describe as as being due to the sponge spicules but that's probably not correct because sponge spicules are these rod shaped uh, silicate fiberglass the chalky or ashy feel probably actually comes from ash that's burned organics um, from the process of creating this this tempering agent that consists of sponge spicules and and other burned organics. As you might guess, all pottery was not the same. These objects served different functions, and based on a variety of characteristics, researchers can surmise what a clay pot was used for. Here, Dr. Wallace tells us about some of those characteristics. Well, we can definitely tell how a pot was used based on its form. What is it good for cooking or what is it good for uh, storing? So that's morphological characteristics. And then also evidence of use in terms of, of use where is it sooted on the exterior? Then it's definitively used over fire. It's a, definitely a cooking pot. Does it have uh, abrasions uh, on the interior from stirring? We can kind of sometimes tell what might have been cooked inside of it. And then we can also do various kinds of um, residue analyses and actually measure the kinds of starches and proteins and stuff that that might have been cooked in a a pot um, and it's absorbed into the the pores of the vessel. We can also do uh, mineralogical and chemical analysis to determine where a vessel was made and really get at patterns of interaction by identifying non-local artifacts. And pottery is ubiquitous, so it really provides a lot of of material to, to analyze and to figure out patterns of connection. What you have to keep in mind is that these vessels were not used only for cooking and storing food, but also were tied to spiritual beliefs and rituals. Dr. Gerald Milanich, Emeritus Professor at the University of Florida, told us about pots found in burial mounds and why they might have ended up as part of St. John's culture mortuary practices. 
just like we do today, the Indians had specific ceramic vessels to be used in specific circumstances. And so when we begin to understand this, we can see, for instance, that in mounds, uh, the people use certain kinds of uh, uh, pottery vessels sometimes that were effig- animal effigies, owls and, and other animals, to drink sacred teas like the black drink, uh, which is made from a wild holly in Florida that contains uh, caffeine. And because these vessels were sacred and important, under certain circumstances, you might then bury them or put them, take them out of circulation and put them in a space where, you know, because they were such powerful vessels, they wouldn't bother ordinary people. So you would take them and put them, for instance, in a mound. So when we excavate a mound like that, what we would call a burial mound, essentially what we're finding is a... Uh, the remains of a funeral, of a funeral ceremony. And so we see these uh, objects and the people that were uh, important within that that funeral ceremony preserved uh, a moment in time, if you would, in that mound. Clay pots were not only ideal for cooking and spiritual practices, but travel as well. Dr. Wallace tells us how far away St. John's pottery has been found, which demonstrates the mobility of these people and this object. In the, in the late archaic period, um, there was a major ceremonial center in northeastern Louisiana called Poverty Point, where we find St. John's pottery in abundance. And um, it may be that, that people living in the St. John's River Valley uh, traveled in, in pretty large numbers to that site. The oldest fired clay pottery found in the region is known as orange fiber tempered pottery. This system of pottery manufacturing began thousands of years ago in the St. John's region. Dr. Milanich tells us how they made and ornamented this style of pottery. We start getting fired clay pottery in the St. John's area about 4,000 years ago, and the earliest uh, pottery we, we have to give it a name to, so we call it orange pottery, named for an orange creek that's on the St. John's River up near uh, Palatka. And that earliest pottery is actually uh, to strengthen the clay walls of the vessels, they would uh, put temper, uh, just like a modern ceramicist would do, but they would put uh, palmetto fibers from palmetto fronds, uh, also Spanish moss. And when the clay is, is, when the pots are fired, that organic material often just burns out and leaves little holes. So when you find this early orange period orange ceramics that has this it's very light because it has all the holes in it and uh, the fibers are burnt out of a lot of it. A more recent advent in pottery design is known as Czech stamped pottery. This style of pottery is found throughout the southeast and depending on their origin differ in many ways. In the St. John's region the Czech designs were fashioned similarly to other pottery in the southeast except their designs were simpler, and sponges were used to act as temper in the manufacturing process. Pots found on the interior tended to be smaller, while those on the coast tended to be larger, which would indicate different uses and population sizes for the societies that created these vessels. Dr. Milanich told us how these designs were made and why these designs were so important. The Indians begin to decorate pottery with a check stamp design. They would carve wooden paddles with a check design and then use those paddles to, you know, hit the sides of the unfired or rub them, push, impress them into the sides of the unfired clay pots. And that left this waffle-like design on the pots, and then they would fire them, and so we have what we call St. John's check stamp pottery. It's very distinctive, uh, usually dates after about A.D. 700. And we think the reason they did that is it might uh, help the pot, because it increases the surface area, it helps the pot to fire better, uh, increases conductivity when you're cooking something over a fire. And so we find St. John's pottery bowls, little bitty things that look like something you'd eat your breakfast cereal from, and then some are much larger, looks like something you'd stick over a fire to uh, boil your uh, nut soup with uh, some corn in it or something like that. To some extent, there is more mystery than history surrounding ceramics and ancient societies, 
as far as the origin and development of pottery. How or why human civilization created the first pottery thousands of years ago is a question open to debate. What we do know is that the St. John's culture and their unique patterns and processes for pottery are left to us underneath the soil and in museums throughout Florida. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of A History of Central Florida Podcast. To see these artifacts and for more information about pre-Columbian Indian ceramics, please visit the New Smyrna Museum of History at 120 Sam's Avenue, New Smyrna Beach, Florida, 32168. Make sure to join us for our next episode, titled Indian Canoes.